In this video, we're gonna cover how the brand got started, how the logo came about, Antoine Dixon, videos, and so much more. What's up guys, my name is Levi, this is Shred Shop, connecting you to skateboarding. And today we're taking a look at 14 things you didn't know about Deathwish skateboards. Before we talk about Deathwish, we couldn't do it without talking about Baker Skateboard. So while Andrew Reynolds is riding for Birdhouse Skateboards, filming for the end, there's a bunch of footage that didn't make it into the end because it was too rough for Birdhouse. So famous filmer Jay Strickland took all that too rough for Birdhouse footage and made a video called Baker Bootleg. Baker Skateboard starts in the year 2000 when Andrew Reynolds leaves his longtime sponsor, Birdhouse. The the original team was Andrew Reynolds, Dustin Dolan, Mike Maldonado, and Jeff Linosi, with Ams, Knox Godoy, Evan Hernandez, and Terry Kennedy. And not long after that, Jim Greco and Eric Ellington leave Zero Skateboards to join the Baker Squad. Greco and Ellington were a huge part of the brand at the beginning. And so let's talk about their lives. Those two were in the limelight. They were a big part of skateboarding. And so them taking the risk of leaving an established brand like Zero Skateboards and jumping over to Baker and what it was at that time was a big deal. So let's talk Ellington. He was born in Anchorage, Alaska which is definitely rare for us to see a pro skateboarder come out of. He later moves to Arizona and California where he pursues his skateboard career. In 1999, he goes pro for Zero Skateboard and he has standout parts in Misled Youth and Thrill of It All. He also was a part of the iconic early 2000s America team. He had great pro models on there. He had a part in the iconic This Is Skateboarding video with him. America is when he first started to see his success in shoe design. He had many shoes with America, one of them being the Ellington One. His Ellington One was a famous iconic shoe with a dip toe that was based off of an Allen Iverson Reebok shoe. And while on Baker, he had an iconic part in Baker 3. That was the one where he big spin Carlsbad gap. And then in 2006, at probably the height of his career, he takes a risk to leave America Footwear to co-found Supra Footwear with his friend Angel Cabada, which ends up paying off for him lucratively in the long run. And with Supra, he had a ton of different pro model shoes to add to his catalog. He has spent a lot of his career designing shoes. And then in 2018, he launches his own footwear and lifestyle brand, Human Recreational Services, or HRS for short. And get this, you'll see a lot of celebrities wearing his gear. Even my wedding shoes were from HRS. Ellington's wife, opened legendary New York skate shop called KCDC, which is a must stop if you're ever in New York. And recently he got signed on as a skater and creative director with China's premier sportswear brand, Linning. They make some really unique looking sports shoes and obviously Ellington is bringing in his flavor to make skate ones too. Now let's talk about Jim Greco. Jim Greco is a founding member of the Baker crew and like Ellington has a stacked resume of video parts. He's had parts in Misled Youth, Asian Goddess, Baker Bootleg, Baker 2G, Baker 3, and obviously footage in all the Death Wish videos. And more recently, he's let out three indie skate films where we see into the mind of Greco. And they were called Way Out, Jobs, Never, and White Wall. They almost feel like an indie film with skateboarding in it. They're actually pretty cool. In the March 2001 Transworld issue, Greco has a pro spotlight interview. At the beginning of the interview, they have to put a dictionary in it explaining all the slang he uses because he's known to make up a lot of words. Like Ellington, Greco left his longtime sponsor of Vans where he had pro models like the Thunder and the Asco Bar and jumped over to Supra to be one of the founding team members. And he went on to have a bunch of top selling pro model shoes with Supra. And later on in his career in 2014, he founds Hammer Skateboards. Like many of the other piss trunks, Greco had an array of fashion choices over the years. He's definitely made his marks some more memorable than others. He even went through a major tattoo phase, got a bunch of tattoos and had his throat done. But if you look at modern day Greco, it's not there anymore. Quarter Snacks even did a timeline of his different fashion choices. So as as you can see, Ellington and Greco are the two main characters in this story. And after riding for Baker Skateboards for seven years, they joined together with Reynolds to form Baker Boys Distribution. Over the years, Baker Boys has distributed many different brands like Baker, Deathwish, Palace, Birdhouse, Illegal Civ, Shake Junt, 917, and many more. And then in 2008, the video Baker Has a Deathwish was released, and this was the launch of Deathwish Skateboards. This video was over an hour long, and it featured the entire Baker team and what was to be the original 
original Death Wish team. Throughout the video, people are riding Baker and Death Wish boards, so it's a really good promotion for the brand as it launches. It has parts from all the OG team, which is obviously Greco and Ellington, Lizard King, Slash, and last part coming through by Antoine Dixon. Antoine Dixon was a massive part of the brand when it first started. He even got a Death Wish tattoo. Let's go back on his history. Antoine gets his first board from a CCS catalog. Not long after, he gets sponsored by Transition Skate Shop in Carson, California, who he said over the years has done so much for him. Shout out your local shop. He loved them so much he got Transitions tattooed on him too. How many of you guys would get a tattoo for your local shop? We got six dudes that have Shreds tattoos. Listen, let's raise the stakes. If you guys go and get a Shreds tattoo and send us a photo and a video, we'll send you a free board. Not kidding. Let's get back to it. Transition Skate Shop helps Antoine get on Chocolate Flow originally, and then not long after that, he gets put on Baker at a trade show from Ellington and Reynolds. He also gets added to the S Footwear Squad and films his Baker three-part in only three months. After that, he has some run-ins with the law. And then in 2008, when Death Wish is launched, he decides to jump ship from Baker over to Death Wish. At that time, he had the number one selling board on Death Wish, and he even had the number one selling board on Death Wish while he was in jail. Unfortunately, his troubles with the law continue continue a little bit and he ends up losing his shoe and board sponsor because of it. The thing is for a lot of us when you think about Death Wish, he's one of the first skaters that comes to mind. We interrupt this program for comment of the week. It's a spicy one. It's on our 50 secrets and stories behind skateboard brand names video. It's from a turd named Ratsy. He said, you really have to stop with fart jokes, dude. <laughs> For you. If you like what we do, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and comment so we can give you more of what you love. And hey, if you're on other platforms, we're there too, at Shred Shop or at Levi Switzer. The Death Wish name and logo is inspired by a cult classic, Vigilante. You say it weird. What? You say, you're saying Vigilante. Vi vigilante, Vigilante, Vigilante. Okay, I'm just sticking with what I have. I'm saying Lanti. He's saying Lanti. Yeah, Vigilante. Yeah. Yeah, but, but I say Vigilante. Balake. My name is Blake. Are you out of your goddamn mind? <laughs> yeah, so it's three different ways. Vigilante. The name was inspired by the Vigilante cult classic justice film called Death Wish, which came out in 1974. And then the Death Wish logo was inspired by the cross symbol that the gang in Death Wish 3 wore. In 2016, Death Wish did a nod to this film in their board series, VHS Wasteland. The logo and typography for the brand was created by Mark Foster, or Foss, who is a British graphic designer who also did logos for Altamont, Landscape, and Heroin. Foss got his start in the skateboard world by working at Slam City Skate Shop in London, England. This was the same shop that Palace Skateboards was conceived out of. Over the years, they kept adding talent to the squad, and then in 2013, they let out their first standalone video called the Death Wish video, with parts from the OGs like Lizard King, Ellington, Greco, Slash, and also parts from the new talent they added in those years, people like Furby, Neen Williams, Moose, and last part going to the new addition, John Dixon. The full video was edited by Greco and Ellington themselves. You might have noticed that Antoine Dixon didn't have a part in this video. It's when he was going through his stuff, and it's because his skating is bar none. Jason Momoa has a death wish. If you didn't know, Eric Ellington and Jason Momoa are great friends. So much so that Jason Momoa has a guest pro model board. Death wish Momoa boards. What? These were impossible to find with very limited runs, but if you got one, please give it to us for this wall back here. Momoa returns the favor of the bro model by getting a makeup artist to put a death wish tattoo on him during the filming of Game of Thrones. Send us a screenshot of this if you can find it. We haven't been able to. He's not the only celebrity with a death wish tattoo. Lil Wayne has a death wish tattoo on his face. And then there's other pros that have death wish tattoos like Eric Ellington, Jim Greco, Antoine Dixon, and Lizard King. Do you guys have any skate brand logo tattoos, let us know below which ones. I even got like six or seven. If you watch or know TMZ, you might have noticed that Jason Momoa and Eric Ellington had to quarantine together after they went to Europe for the Dune world premiere. During this time, they filmed different Instagram content and you can catch an interview in magazine Monster Children where Jason Momoa interviews Eric Ellington. In February 2017, a relatively unknown skate kid from Florida gets added to the team. His name, Jamie Foy. In the following months, he goes on a tear and by the end of that year, he has his name on the most coveted prize in skateboarding. 
category, the Thrasher Skater of the Year trophy. It might be the fastest rise to fame of any skateboarder in history. If you don't know, he's the front crook king. That year, he got a Thrasher cover of him front crooking El Toro. Famous photographer Atiba Jefferson said it was one of the harder photos that he's ever shot because Jamie Foy landed it first try. It really is proof that Jamie Foy can front crook anything. He's also won best trick at Tampa Pro multiple times. In 2019, he dropped his first pro model shoe on New Balance called the 306. Since then, it has always been the best selling New Balance numeric shoe. In 2022, he wins Tampa Pro. He's become a huge part of the brand DNA. When older guys think about Death Wish, they think about Greco, Ellington, and Antoine Dixon. When the young kids think about it, I guarantee you guys are thinking about Jamie Foy. Let's talk modern Death Wish. In 2020, they released the Uncrossed video. Since adding Jamie Foy to the team, they've also added big names like Taylor Kirby, Jake Hayes, Pedro Delfino, Julian Davidson, and Victoria Ruska. Also super recently, they just added two new young guns as AMs, Sean O'Connor and Noah Pollard. Guys, that's Death Wish. I'm Levi, this is Shred Shop, connect you to skateboarding, and you just watched 14 things you didn't know about Death Wish skateboards. If you like this video, check out one of our other videos. And as you always know, we love local skateboard shops. So make sure you're going out and you're shopping at your local shop, not in the malls. Uh -huh.